Hello, welcome back to the Indie Ocean Let's Plays Talisman Digital Edition. Um, quick recap, this is a digital version of the classic Games Workshop board game Talisman, the Magical Quest game, which was a childhood favourite of mine. used to play it with my mum and my brother, and we all had great times with it. Uh, this is available through Steam. It was greenlit. It's still in development, but you can buy an early access version. And you get a bonus thing, Talisman Prologue, as well. Uh, link is below. It's worth looking at if you like this kind of thing. Definitely my favourite board game I've ever played. Anyway, so the state of play at the moment is we are a priest. We have special abilities of beginning the game with one spell, which at some point we lost. I didn't notice it happening. So I don't know if it's a bug, because again, this is still in development at the moment, so there are sometimes bugs. I don't know if that's where the spell went, or if someone used a power that nicked it from us. I'm not certain. It all happened a bit too quickly. Um, if we go somewhere where we can play, pray, like the chapel, then we can add one to the score for a better result. And we can automatically destroy any spirits we encounter without having to engage them in psychic combat. This means we can't keep them as a trophy but we can gain a spell. I forget exactly what trophies do. Um, <clears throat> I haven't played the digital version long enough to run into that really yet. From what I remember from playing the actual board game, uh, you could save dead enemies, and when you accumulated enough of them, then you would gain either a strength point or a craft point, I think. I think that's how it works, with trophies. Um, anyway. So, we could actually choose to fight spirits so that we can keep them as trophies. But, yeah. And we can't use a weapon in combat, which is a serious problem if we come into any physical combat. Because that's actually the main way of improving your strength stat for fights, using weapons. Anyway, uh, so the state of play at the moment is no one has found a talisman to allow them to get to the crown. But uh, we've been doing pretty badly. Um, a lot of the other characters have stuff. Um, the assassin doesn't have much. He has one follower. But uh, the monk has several objects, good objects indeed. And the wizard doesn't have much, but he has got a couple of stat buffs. So, <clears throat> I feel like we're, we're struggling a little bit here. But, if you notice, the monk is down to his last life, so he really needs to do something before he's bumped off. Alright, let's roll. And I mean literally, let's roll the die. I wasn't just trying to sound cool in inverted commas. Alright, let's go... Uh, the forest... The forest, uh, I mean, we could get a good result, we could gain a craft bonus, and we don't have to roll because of our follower, who will let us not do so. But let's go to the tavern instead. I think our odds are a little better there. Um, roll the die, and we get a four. Gamble and win one gold. Not a great result, but decent enough. We haven't yet had cause to use any of our gold. Um, if we go to the village or the city or we encounter a market somewhere, then we might find that we can actually buy some good stuff with our gold and finally start swinging the balance a little further towards our side of the game here. The Phantom um, provided some kind of benefit to evil characters. Oh, he's cast random. That's rough. Um, can be devastating, but can also be beneficial. One, become a toad for three turns. Oh, that's a rough draw. But he spent... yes. Um, the monk spent one of his fate points, I think, to re-roll that, and he got a much better roll that actually gave him a life. Um, so now we have a moment to think. I'll explain what happened there. Random is a spell that... Uh, was it the assassin? I think it was the assassin. Maybe it was the wizard. Yeah, I'm sure it was the assassin. Um, anyway, whichever one, cast on the monk. And the player who it's being cast on rolls the die to see what happens to him. Because it's random, some of the effects are bad and some are good. Initially he rolled a 1, which would have turned him into a toad for 3 turns. Um, which gives you very poor stats and I think reduces your movement to 1 space. Uh, I don't know if it makes you drop objects as well, I can't remember. 
Um, but he used a fate point to re-roll that, and he re-rolled a six, which meant it restored a life point, or gained a life point. Um, you can only heal up to your starting value of four life, but you can gain additional life beyond that. So anyway. Um, so he's back up to two, so he's not at the threshold of death as he was before. Let's roll. Okay. So we rolled a six. So we can go from corner to corner here. Let's have a look at whether it would be better to go to the castle or the village. The city or the village, rather. Um, in the city, you can go to one of these three people. The doctor, heal up to two lives at the cost of one gold each. So we could do that, because we are one life down on our starting value. Uh, we could go to the alchemist and have objects turned into gold, but we don't have any objects. Or we could go to the enchantress and roll a die to see if bad things or good things happen to us. The village is kind of similar. There's a blacksmith where you can purchase some gear, go to the healer, again, heal your life in exchange for money, or go to the mystic and roll to have some stuff happen. Um, I want to go to the city, but that's an old habit, because the second edition of Talisman the board game, the one I owned, had um, several expansion sets, and three of them had additional boards, my favourite of which was Talisman City. So when you landed on this space, you could move over to the Talisman City board, which had a whole separate set of spaces and new adventure cards and everything. It was brilliant. I really liked that. Um, we don't have that here. I don't know if that's in the pipeline for the future, um, but it's certainly not the case now. So I'm going to go to the village so that we can go to the blacksmith and buy some gear. Um, we can't use weapons as the priest. I mean, I, we can probably carry them. <clears throat> but we can't use them. But what we could get is... We can't afford armour, but we could get a shield. Um, so that if we do get into combat, we'll have a little bit more survivability. So, blacksmith. Continue. And going to buy a shield. Could, of course, get the helmet, but the shield is slightly better. Um, if you're defeated in battle and lose a life, roll one die. If you roll five or six, the shield protected you, and you did not lose that life. Okay, so let's take that. So we finally have an object, and that at least gives us some little advantage over our starting position, uh, which we didn't have previously. We did spend all of our gold on that, which is brilliant. The monk is actually attacking the assassin. Oh, he rolled a six. He might pull this off. And he's done it. The monk beat the crap out of the assassin. That's not something you see every day. What kind of monk are you? You're starting a fight. Well, such is the allure of the Crown of Command that drives monks to do things that they wouldn't otherwise do. Or maybe it's all that built-up sexual frustration from his monastic lifestyle. Take it out on the assassin! Okay. And the wizard is just going to go to that shrine thing. I think it's a shrine. And he's going to pray. And he'll roll a three, which was ignorance. Graveyard, sorry. He prayed in a graveyard. That's just morbid. Uh, but he's evil. I think that's what the flame icon means. I think this sort of uh, triangle icon means good, the flame one means evil. And I don't remember what the neutral one looks like. So anyway, um, he could have had his fate re uh, replenished to its starting value, which I think is five. Or he could have prayed. He chose to pray and he rolled one to four, which meant he was ignored. Quite long odds there, actually. We couldn't do that because we're good. Okay, so we rolled a six, so we're going corner to corner again. Um, as a priest, you would think the chapel would be a logical choice for us. Um, evil will lose life. Neutral, you can heal at the cost of money. Good, you can heal up to your starting value for free, or you can pray. Very much, excuse me, very much like the graveyard for the evil characters. Um, hmm... Do I want to heal the one life I've lost, or do I want to pray? I think, I think I'll go there, and I'll pray. Come on. Five or six, five or six. Two. Oh. God ignored me! Damn you! I mean, not that he's not known for doing that anyway. Ooh. Agnostic commentary. All right. Um... So, the monk's taking on the assassin again! This is madness! What is this monk doing? To be fair, though, 
he does have a strength modifier of three because of his weapons, so he is actually really doing a number on the assassin here. This is quite the warrior monk. He seems to be more of a Templar than a sort of Gregorian. Right. I, was, I was trying to think of the name of a, a sect of monks. I'm a medieval historian by training. I should know, but I can't remember what any of them are called. Okay. Um, so that guy, the wizard, has gone to buy some gear from the blacksmith. What did he buy? Um, he bought an axe. That's a good choice. Um, it not only adds to your strength in battle, it also gives you the ability to build a raft so you can cross the river to the middle region. Not such a good purchase for us, though. Um, it would enable us to build a raft, but we can't use it in combat. Such as the Curse of the Priest, I'm afraid. That sounds like a cheesy horror film. The Curse of the Priest. Alright, what's over here in the woods? Fairy. A fairy seeks a champion to the first good character, such as us. Landing here, she will grant one of the following wishes of his choice. So there's no rolling a die here. One spell, one gold, one strength, one craft, one life, one fate, or teleport to another space in this region. Um, what's our alternative over there? Planes draw one card. Um, I think it probably makes more sense to go with the known quantity here in these circumstances. Um, and I'm thinking gain a spell. Bell. It's tempting to say gain a strength to compensate for the fact that we have low strength and we can't use weapons, but frankly, even three strength won't make a huge difference. It's not like we're going to be able to fight the Sentinel with a strength nine at any point in the game. So I reckon travel here, encounter the fairy, and gain a spell. So we'll draw one from the spell deck. Psionic Blast! Also known as Ready Breck! Anyone else old enough to remember the Ready Breck adverts with the, the guy who glowed orange? No? Okay. Cast on yourself when you're about to engage in battle, add your starting craft to your strength until the end of the battle. Only your starting craft. I mean, we still have our starting craft, which is four, but if we'd, say, gained two extra craft points up to six, we'd still only add four to our strength. But still, that's handy. That would give us six rather than two. So that's hugely beneficial. Um, potentially. Might even enable us to take on the Sentinel. I mean, the odds would still be long. But if it comes to that, it might be a possibility. So between that and the shield that we bought in the village, we've actually improved our combat situation quite a lot. We're still no fighter, but it's something. Of course, the spell can only be used once. So uh, it's not a lasting improvement. Right, so what's the wizard up to? He's going there, and he's going to encounter the enchanter. Uh, not exactly sure what happened. <clears throat> Again, apologies for me clearing my throat and things. I've had this cough for at least a month. Um, there was a time when I'd have thought, I've had a cough for a month, I should go to the doctor in case it's a chest infection. But the last time I did that, a few years ago, I saw a doctor I hadn't seen before, and she tried to convince me I had asthma. Um, which wouldn't necessarily be a bad call, except for the way she did it. I'm going to <laughs> stop playing the game for a second here, just to share this with you. This genuinely happened, no exaggeration. <clears throat> we talked about my cough for a few minutes, and then she went, so so is it is it a dry cough, or is it like a loose cough? Are you coughing up phlegm? And I said, yes. Yes, I, I have been coughing up. Yeah, it's definitely not dry, it's quite loose and mucusy. Yuck. And she went, right, okay. Um, well, in that case, it could be a mild case of asthma. And I sort of went, oh, okay, really? Is that is that quite phlegmy then? I thought it was not. And she went, well, you know, if you had a loose phlegmy cough and you were coughing up, then I'd say it's not asthma. But because it's a dry cough, I'm going to say it is asthma. And I thought, oh, okay, you misheard me. No, no, it, it is phlegmy. Uh, it's not a dry cough. And she went, oh, yes, I see, I see. Well, if it was a dry cough, uh, sorry, if it was a loose cough, it might be a chest infection. Uh, but because it's dry, it's probably asthma. No, 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 it is loose. It's not dry. And she went, yes, yeah, I understand. But if it was loose, if it was, it might be a chest infection. But because it's not... And this went on for a few minutes, and she just couldn't grasp it. Seriously, no shit, that actually happened. How does a person become a doctor? 
with that sort of ability to grasp ideas. Anyway, tangent aside, <laughs> that's why I'm not going to the doctor about this cough. <clears throat> so, I'm afraid you'll just have to put up with me clearing my throat occasionally. Let's roll. Okay, we got a six. We seem to be rolling a lot of sixes. We could over go over here and attack the monk, but he has such high strength with his objects and things. Um, we'd be on an equal footing in psychic combat, but unfortunately, the priest can't initiate psychic combat. Look at his abilities. It's not there. Um, some characters, such as the ghoul, can land on a character <clears throat> and start a psychic combat rather than a physical combat. <clears throat> uh, but... The priest cannot, so there'd be absolutely no point attacking him. We could go over there and just draw a card, uh, which might be a good play. <clears throat> Again, I do apologise for the constant clearing of my throat. Planes draw one card, which is fine. Or the other one on the other side. And frankly, I just want to get away from that psychotic, violent, super powerful monk. So let's go over there. Draw a card. Alchemist. He's a follower, so we can pick him up. He can convert any number of objects you have into gold. Not immediately useful, but there's no cap on the number of followers you can have, so we might as well take him. The only object we have is a shield, which we actually want to keep, not turn into gold. Okay, so Monk is going into the woods. An angel! If you're good, you gain a life. Well, he is good, so he gained a life. So the Monk is back up to three life. Remember, he was previously on the brink of death with just one life, but he's managed to pull it back. Uh, the Assassin's going to take on the Wizard, which is actually a pretty good call. So, he did the Wizard in for one life. I noticed the Assassin isn't taking money. Um, when you attack another character and you beat them, you can actually take gold instead of money. Um, uh, instead of life, rather. <clears throat> uh, which seems like an odd play. You know, really you want to eliminate other players. So someone's casting random again. He's going to cast it on the monk. What effect will the monk suffer? Gain one life, which is exactly what happened to him the last time. He's really turned this around. This monk is a serious threat. <laughs> That's not a sentence you utter very often. Um, okay, rolled a two. So there's a card on this space already. Huh. That's a demon. Craft ten. Oh, actually, priest ability. We can land on that and just destroy it. We can exorcise it without having to engage it in combat. We won't be able to keep it as a trophy, but we will be able to gain a second spell. That actually might be worth doing. Um, what's our current spell? Remind me. Uh, spells. Oh yeah, the one that adds our starting craft to our strength. And here's a little um, tutorial message about how many spells you can have. You need a minimum craft of three to have any spells. Then four to five, you can have two, and six plus, you can have three. Um, okay. <clears throat> so, yeah, I say, let's do that. Go over there, and we'll encounter the demon, and we'll just destroy spirit, using the ability on the right there, so we'll exorcise the demon. Continue, and now we can draw a spell. Alchemy. Cast at the start of your turn, convert any number of objects you have into gold. Duh! But we already have an alchemist to do that for us. Um, can the alchemist be used up, though? Let's have a look at the alchemist card. Um, no, any number of objects into gold. So we have unlimited use of the alchemy spell anyway, so that is completely useless. Oh well, let's end our turn. Okay, so the monk has got a raft. He used his axe, I think, to build a raft. I think that's what happened. So he should be able to cross into the middle region on the next turn if he's so inclined. But perhaps he will not be inclined. So the wizard is casting teleport, which should allow him to teleport to any space in this region. And he encountered pool of life there. Um, let's see. Pool of life. Four life points are found here. You may bathe in the pool once per visit and take one life from the pool to add to your own lives. So this is one of those places where you can get life above and beyond your starting score. If you go to a doctor or a healer, they can only uh, restore your life up to the starting life score of four, but something like the Pool of Life can add life points beyond that. And I'm going to stop saying life now, I seem to have said it too many times. Let's roll. Okay. 
Oh, and notice these cards displayed at the bottom. These are basically cards that we can use right now at this moment. So we've got the Alchemist and our two spells. Uh, okay, we rolled two. What's on this space? Another spirit, which would allow us to draw another spell, but we actually don't have room for another spell. I don't know whether we'd be able to draw one and discard our useless alchemy spell. Let's find out. Um, let's zoom out from that card. There we go. Alright. Um, so let's destroy the spirit. And draw another spell? Draw another? Yes? Okay, your craft isn't high enough for you to gain spells. Can I discard one? No. Okay, well, that answers that question anyway. It's been a learning experience, if nothing else. I thought we might be able to draw one and then discard one of the ones we don't want. I'd like to just cast the alchemy spell and waste it, but then we'd have to turn something into gold, and we only have one object, which I certainly don't want to lose. Okay, the assassin won that combat. Um, oh, he's actually going to... Take an object, I think. Did he? Um, yeah, he took the monk's axe. A fairly good call. So there are now two people with axes. Well, there were before as well, but um, two people with axes, which means they can cross to the middle region if they're so inclined. Still, no one has a talisman yet. So that's slightly problematic. Um,. The wizard is encountering money. Not a big deal. Another six. We roll so many sixes. Okay, so it's basically just fields or fields. Draw one card. So we'll go to the fields. And let's draw a card. And we have a mage. He's not a follower, though. He's a stranger, so he sets up shop here. A kindly mage has made his home here for the rest of the game. I like these little write-ups on the cards. A kindly mage. It, it doesn't just say you encounter a mage. It says a kindly mage has made his home here. And the enemies often say things like a hobgoblin is stalking this area. That kind of thing. Okay. Um, he will give one spell per visit to each good character. But we don't have enough craft to pick up a spell from him. Damn it! This spell affliction is becoming a serious problem. While the others are taking their turns, I'm going to have a swig of my Darjeeling. The light and fruity tea. I mean, it's not really fruity, but it's fruity for a non-fruit flavoured tea, I suppose. <laughs> I don't know why I'm just rambling about tea. Alright, so the monk is going to um, draw a card there. And because he lost his axe, uh, his modifier is low. Is it the axe? Or the He's lost something that's lowered his modifier. But anyway, that was... Oh, that, that's because it's a psychic combat, not a physical one. Um, but he lost the psychic combat, which means the spectre that he was battling is now going to remain on that space until it's killed. Um, so anyone landing there will not draw a card. They will have to encounter the spectre. <clears throat> okay. So, next is the wizard. What's he doing? He's just going to draw... Oh no, roll a dice, because it's the forest. And uh, he gained a craft because of an elf or someone showing him out. Yeah, A ranger guides you out, gain one craft. He's been doing well with the stat games, actually. Um, I feel like all the other players are doing a lot better than we are. Don't want to go to the graveyard, because we'd actually lose a life being a good character. That's right. No one holy can go in a cemetery. Hmm. So we basically have to go to the city here. So... Um, only two options are open to us. Uh, we don't have any gold, so we can't go to the doctor. We could go to the alchemist. What is it with this glut of alchemists? We already have two ways of performing alchemy ourselves. So it's basically the enchantress. You have to go to one of the three. So if you can't go to the doctor or the alchemist, or don't want to, then you have to go to the enchantress and roll the die. Um, she doesn't look the way I expected. She's less clothed than I remember from previous visits, but I suppose there wasn't a picture of her in the board game. Anyway, I imagined her being more of an old crone. Um, <clears throat> Alright, well, we'll have to encounter the Enchantress. And we'll have to roll a die. Here we go. Five. Gain one strength. Not bad, actually. Um, we haven't actually had any physical combats yet, so we haven't suffered too badly from our lack of strength, but it means 
we're now up to average strength. Three is about the average for the strength stat, at least for for a starting value. So we're not quite as vulnerable as we were. Okay. I don't know why a demon card flashed up just there. Um, I guess maybe someone traded in... I think someone traded in their trophies for a stat gain. I think that's what was going on there. And the wizard rolled a one. Is he going to tackle either of those players? Or is he going to encounter the space? He's going back to the pool of life. Can't say I blame him. That was a good call. Um, Alright, so we've rolled a four. So we could go to the crags, where we'd have to roll a die. Which would be all either bad or neutral, apart from the six. Um, let's go to the woods, because thanks to our pixie follower, we can evade combat if necessary when we're there. Let's draw a card. Goblin. So there, indeed, is an example of combat. We have to encounter the goblin, but we have the option to evade, which will leave him sitting on that space. Or we could actually fight him. I'm tempted to fight him. We have a shield that might protect us from losing another life. And the reason I'm tempted to fight him is to start gaining trophies towards um, a strength gain. And to not just leave monsters strewn all over the board. Let's give it a go. Oh, we rolled a one. Shite. He also rolled a one. We're okay! We actually pulled it off. Nicely done, priest. Brawl with that goblin. Show him who's boss. Okay. So that's the end of our turn. What's up next? Okay, the monk has gone to a field and he's drawn a ghost. But it doesn't appear there, it appears somewhere else. Ooh, in the chapel. A place where you wouldn't normally encounter an adventure card. Eesh. That's a rough draw. The game's moving very slowly at the moment. No one's making much progress. Um, no one's even got across to the middle region yet. Sometimes it can happen very quickly. Um, but this one is, is going quite slowly. I think you can tell that a game of Talisman can run for hours and hours and hours. Uh, I'm probably going to have to finish all of this in one sitting, actually. Um, because I'm meant to be playing this with a friend who's coming over tomorrow, and it seems like you can only have one saved game at a time, so if I want to wrap this up, I'll have to do it today. Alright. Okay, well, it's come to our turn. Uh, we're at, what, 25-ish minutes for this episode, so I think I'll knock it on the head there. Thanks for watching, as always. Rejoin us, or rejoin me and the rest of the viewers the next time round. Um, and we'll see how the priest's quest for power goes. Um, the Crown of Command seems to have this effect on people. Even a pious priest and monk become covetous of power when it's offered to them on a plate, or rather on an enormous stone column surrounded by danger. But anyway, come back then, see how the priest's journey continues. Um, thanks for watching, and until then, bye for now.